gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, the third chapter, starting with the 14th verse. John writes, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen, in their, seen that their deeds have been done in God. Here ends our gospel. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. The words you just heard are the cornerstone of our faith. They are words we utter when we are scared, lonely, joyous, and every moment in between. They are some of the first scripture we commit to memory because our, our faith is built on this free gift God gave to us. As I sat writing this sermon this past Friday, I felt the weight and heaviness of this world we live in. And as I reread these words, for what feels like the millionth time, I was reminded that this place is not our home because God sent his son into the world to free us from this world, that if we believe in him, we will join him in eternal life. And there is no better gift than that. There is no better light in the middle of the darkness than verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It is hard to understand just how much God loves his creation, the unconditional love that God has for each and every one of us, because only unconditional love would have brought about a gift so extravagant. When God created the earth and all that was in it, he said everything was good. And then he made humankind in his image and declared them very good. And I think on that day, the day Adam and Eve were created was the day unconditional love was born. Unconditional love from God saw humankind through the fall of Adam and Eve, through the flood, through the many wanderings of the Israelites wanting a king going around in the desert, the Israelites in general needed a ton of unconditional love. God's love saw Job and Jonah and Moses and Abraham through all of their sufferings. The stories of God's unconditional love are littered throughout the Bible. God saw that his creation, his beloved people, were dying after the fall, floundering, unable to figure out how to honor God, how to live, how to stay away from the darkness. When sin entered the world in the garden, humans never stood a chance because we are mortal and we are frail and often make terrible choices. We are self-serving, often choosing ourselves over and above everything and everyone else. Yet God, in his infinite wisdom and unconditional love, sent Jesus to save us from ourselves. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, were there from the beginning of the Bible. God made humankind in our image, he says, plural. I think God knew the moment he made Adam and Eve that he would need to send his son because God knew that at some point humanity would choose the darkness, would choose selfishness over love of God because God knew humans inside and out. He made them and he knew we would fail and he loved us enough he loved us unconditionally from day one and knew we would need a savior. God
God sent Jesus to save us, not because of anything we have or could have done, but simply because God has unconditional love for each and every one of us. If you look up the word unconditional, the definition says it is not subject to any conditions, absolute, meaning there are no influences, manners, outcomes, or choices that would make God stop loving us. Because we are human, people who make mistakes hourly, who make poor choices constantly, we don't understand what unconditional love is. Sadly, we can't offer it to anyone, and because of that, we don't always know how to respond to God's gift of unconditional love to us. There are two things on this earth that I think come close to unconditional love. I would say the love of a parent or guardian is pretty close. The love you have for your child is limitless. But because we are humans, there could be a time when a choice is made and that love dims just a little bit. We don't try to put conditions on our love, but somehow we do because we're human and we aren't perfect. Whereas there are no limits on God's love ever. The other thing that I think comes pretty close to unconditional love is the love of a pet. Many of you know this past fall, I welcomed a furry ball of energy into my home. Bug is a seven month old, half black lab, half German shepherd. She is a joy and a challenge all at the same time. And the love she has for me appears to be limitless. So many of you want to know or see pictures of her. So I'm, I gave us a few this morning just to give you an idea of what I come home to every day. I'm fairly certain the dog thinks she's human. She enjoys sitting in one of my chairs. And there's a corner that she likes to tip the chair all the way back to see around because she can. You can go to the next one. She's just, she ate. That's all she really wants to do is eat. She's big. She's 60 pounds now. The next one. She graduated puppy kindergarten. We're pretty excited about this. This is her graduation cap. We have two sets of training down, one to go. And then the final one. Because who wouldn't choose to sit on a side table instead of the couch? I think it's because she could see better out the window. I'm not super sure. A better vantage point, but yeah. So that's my furry little ball of energy that I come home to. Bug's love for me is almost unconditional. The only thing she requires from me is a little bit of attention, some days a lot of attention, two meals a day, and hopefully a walk. And if I miss any of these at any time, she is quick to forgive and to go back to loving me. The happiness in her body when I come home at the end of the day is amazing. To be bathed in unconditional love is wonderful for the soul. So my question then is this. Why can we accept mostly unconditional love from pets and family members, but we can't seem to wrap our heads or hearts around fully unconditional love from the God who created us? When it comes to God's love, we are constantly doubting it, wondering what we have to do, what we, what we have to do to earn it, to keep it, what we have to do to earn another round of grace, trying to figure out when the love will suddenly be gone. And that is something I can't quite figure out either. I do it too. There are times where I doubt God's love for me. I didn't do something right. I was mean and unkind to someone. I lashed out in anger. I think these things somehow make me less deserving of God's love, which is false. And I think this is the time when I won't be able to earn it again, which is wrong. I am bathed in God's love regardless of what I do, as is each of you. Regardless of the choices we make, God's love is still there. Much like when I forget to feed Bug on time, she forgives me and circles back with more love. God does the same for us, except on a grander scale. When we do something that we think separates us from God's love, God doubles down. He bathes us even more in unconditional love. Because as humans, we are insecure. We don't trust ourselves to be worthy of love which means we certainly don't trust God to love us. If we can't fully love ourselves, why would God want to love us? 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but may have eternal life. Unconditional love. God has it in spades for each of us, every minute of every day. Only we somehow forget this. God never loses sight of this. He knows where we are. He knows the hairs on our head. He knows us, sees us, and loves us. Period. Outside of God's unconditional love for us, our gospel passage this morning reminds us of one more vital truth. Our gospel ends with the following. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We spend a lot of time talking about light and darkness, and the verse that is the cornerstone of our faith is no different. Jesus is the ultimate light in the darkness. John says that the judgment is that the light, Jesus, has come into the world, and people chose to ignore the light and stay shrouded in darkness. And that makes me sad. And nothing has changed. We know who the light is. We know what we have to do to follow the light and stay in the light. Instead, we choose to hide in the darkness because the darkness is safe and hidden and feels good. As I mentioned, humans are self-serving creatures. We will choose ourselves nine times out of ten. Yet, in the light of the, yet the light of the world still came to save us, even knowing that we would choose ourselves over that light. Yet when we do actions that bring glory to God, we are spreading this light. And our gospel tells us that when we do what is true, we come into the light, and the light starts to spread even further. As we reminded the parents, grandparents, guardians, sponsors, and congregation during our baptism this morning, we have to let our light shine so that the world may see our good works. Because God came to save the world, and we are to stand in the light because of God's unconditional love. The season of Lent, we are working towards the cross. We are journeying with Jesus to the cross. In the Good Friday narrative, we see ultimate darkness. Darkness descends the earth on the afternoon while Jesus hung on the cross. The world chose darkness, and the world tried to kill the light. But we know that wasn't the end of the story. Once Jesus had died, once the darkness had seemingly won, Jesus was laid in eternal darkness in the tomb. It doesn't get much darker than a cave. Yet, three days later, light broke out of that tomb because darkness can never overcome the light. Never. The ultimate gift of unconditional love broke the bonds of darkness once and for all, for me and for you. As humans, we will occasionally choose darkness. It is in our nature. Yet God's love doesn't disappear. God's love is too big to be concealed in the dark. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. A free gift from the God who loves us unconditionally, without anything done on our part. The gift that brings each of us eternal life without any ounce of darkness. Sounds like heaven to me. Amen.